Hey YouTube, it's your favorite apostate Anon Dude 2 here, once again exposing it watchtower inconsistencies and freeing you from the prison of your own mind. Now, today I would like to talk about uh, our belief in a paradise earth. As witnesses, we're very proud of our belief because it distinguishes us from almost every other religion in the sea of mankind, which believes that once we die we go to a heaven to be with God. And, of course, they have scriptures which would seem to support their belief, as our, we have scriptures which seem to support our belief. But the best place to find out what is true and what is false is by using God's Word, the Bible. And God's Word is very specific, very clear, and very easily, understand, easily understandable. And I think we can agree there. So what I want you to do is I want you to take out your Watchtower libraries and just type in the word paradise. It doesn't have to be paradise earth, just type in the word paradise. And for the purpose of this discussion, we are going to solely be using the Bible. I will nary quote a single Watchtower article to you. We are just going to be using God's word. Okay, you will find that there are a total of 18 references to the word paradise, and if you do a little bit more digging, you will find that the word paradise appears four times total in the Bible in our translation, the New World Translation. And we're just going to go over those scriptures where it appears. Uh, the first time is in the Song of Solomon, chapter 4, and verses 12 to 13. It says there, Your skin is a paradise of pomegranates, with the choicest fruits, henna plants along with spikenard plants. Okay, so we can pretty much discount that scripture as we can obviously tell it's not referring to a paradise earth which we will live forever on. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 to 5 will have much significance to you and will probably raise a few questions as it did for me. Uh, it says, I have to boast, it is not beneficial, but I shall pass on to supernatural visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in union with Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body, I do not know, or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught away, such as to the third heaven. Yes, I know such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, that he was caught away into paradise and heard unutterable words which it is not lawful for a man to speak. Over such a man I will boast, but I will not boast over myself except as respects my weaknesses. So here we can see a clear distinction between the man, the unnamed man, and the Apostle Paul here. Now the Watchtower would have you believe that the Apostle Paul is talking, referring to himself. But we know that Paul was a lawyer, and as a lawyer he would be able to develop arguments very soundly. And it's a little bit ridiculous to conceive that Paul would be lying to the Christians and referring to himself as, as separate personas. Also, if you look, read the account where Saul had the vision of Jesus Christ, which was in fact roughly 14 years ago from the date that he wrote this, uh, it does not refer to seeing Jesus or any visions or hearing anything other than what Jesus told him. In fact, it just refers to a blinding light and then hearing a voice. No out-of-body experience and most certainly not being caught up away to heaven. That's Paul's words, not mine. We dropped, And then we also find that paradise is in reference to a heavenly experience, not an earthly experience. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 1 to 5, this says, I have to boat, or no, sorry, Revelation 2 and verse 7. Let the one who has an ear hear what the Spirit of God says to the congregations. To him that conquers I will grant to eat the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Now, does God reside here on the earth? No, he doesn't. The paradise of God would be in heaven. And the other visions of Revelation would seem to support this, as it does in fact sound like a paradise. And the tree of life, as we well know, is, means uh, eternal life. All spirit creatures dwelling in the heavens today have eternal life. They are immortal. So would it be hard to conceive that life in the heavens would be a paradise? Not at all. Uh, lastly, I want to read you a scripture which is quite controversial, and we have had many discussions on it because it uh, the entire argument rests, in fact, on a comma, whether we believe in an earthly hope or in a heavenly hope. And this is what Jesus said. And he went on to say, Jesus, remember me when you get into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I tell you today, 
you will be with me in paradise. Now, if you'll notice, the comma comes after today, but the Greeks didn't have commas back then. They didn't have use punctuation marks. So we support our placement of the comma by using other scriptures to determine our earthly hope. However, reading what you and I have just read and the context of the word paradise and how it is used, would it be inconsistent with the Bible to place the comma after you? Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. You decide. Uh, you're probably ready to quote to me Ecclesiastes 9.5 where it says that the dead are conscious of nothing at all. But I would like to read you the scripture in verse 2 of that same chapter. All are the same in what all have. One eventuality there is to the righteous one and to the wicked one, the good one and the clean one and the unclean one, and the one sacrificing and the one that is not sacrificing. The good one is, same, is the same as the sinner. And the one swearing is the same as whoever has been afraid of a sworn oath. It's referring to death, is it not? Yes, it is. Now I would like to read you a scripture here in, ver in Hebrews 24 and then uh, 26 to 28. It says, For Christ entered not into a holy place with hands, which is a copy of the reality, but into heaven itself, now to appear before the person of God for us. And then verse 26, the second half of that, it says, Now he has manifested himself once for all time at the conclusion of the system of things to put sin away through the sacrifice of himself. And it is reserved to men to die once for all time, but after this a judgment. So also the Christ was offered once for all time to bear the sins of many. And the second time he appears it will be apart from sin to those earnestly seeking him. Now, Jesus died. He was unconscious. He was not alive. He ceased to be. Does that mean, but when he was resurrected, he was resurrected in a spirit form. Is this inconsistent with Ecclesiastes 9.5? Not at all. G at the time of the writing, the sacred secret had not been revealed. Many prophecies concerning Jesus had not been revealed. So it would be safe to say that it's an understatement. And it refers here in the scripture that we will all die. We all have to pay the price of sin. But afterwards, Jesus was resurrected. Do we not believe in a resurrection? Yes, we do. Uh, and then also we can see in this verse, Jesus is not coming physically here to earth again. Uh, every time he is referred to after the resurrection is referred to in spirit form. And when it says that we will see him again, would it be inconceivable to assume, due to our you know, context of the other scriptures that I read, and I also would like you to read uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 3 on your own time, see what that says, you, you decide. Uh, would it be inconceivable for us to assume that Jesus would see us in heavenly form once we are resurrected, once we have paid the price for sin? I can't decide these things to you. What I read was the Bible, God's word from the New World Translation. I can do nothing more than that. Remember, life is a state of mind. I look forward to your comments. Thank you.